Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Zess and I make Rimpai mini game tutorials. A big thank you to all my patrons who are supporting the continuation of the channel. I appreciate you all, so thank you so much. In this tutorial series, I'll show you how to work with Rimpai's drag and drop system to create draggable display balls. I'll go over a drag display balls properties and how to use them, which includes both the ones that need custom Python functions to work and those that don't. I'll be explaining how to work with Python in a basic way for the purpose of the drag and drop system. But if you want to learn Python more in depth, I recommend that you look up some Python coding tutorials as well after this series. It's generally good to know Python when working with the drag and drop system if you're wanting to implement some more advanced functionality. To be able to code along with the tutorial, you need a fresh Rempy project using the latest version of the Rempy engine. We won't need any pre-made images as we'll be using Rempy's built-in solid display wall instead. Any example code of future in the videos can also be downloaded for free on my Patreon page in a public free post and a link to it in the description box of each video. Without further ado, let's get started. The drag and drop system in Rampai uses specific types of display balls and is pretty simple to set up. To make a simple draggable item in the game, all we really need is something called a drag display ball, which is paired with some visual information like an image. For the tutorial, I've created a screen named drag drop where we'll be adding the drags. In this, I've added a simple image display ball with a plain solid white color as the background and this is just because I think it looks better for this video rather than the default black background. Now to create a drag display ball, we simply write drag followed by a pair of colons to make a block. Since this is a display ball, we can use common properties to position it in the screen and in this case I use the align property. Now this alone doesn't really do much as we don't have anything to drag around yet. For that we need to add a child display ball to this drag that will show some visual information, like an image for example, that the player can interact with. For this, I have created a pink square using Rumpai's solid display ball instead of using an image file. This will simply create a solid color of your choice, which is determined by using a hexadecimal color value. Because I don't really want this solid to take up the entire screen, I set it to a size of 250 pixels. Let's run this example now and see how it works. To do that, we just got to remember to show or call the screen from the start label as well. Here we can see that we have a pink square that can be clicked on and dragged around, as well as dropped when we release the mouse button. And that's how simple it is to create a draggable image. To create more draggable images, we simply just create more drag display balls, and here I've added two more using different colors. We can also group several drags into one drag group. This is done by adding a new display ball called drag group, and then we make sure to add the drag display balls as children to it. This will then unlock some of the properties available to drag display balls that can only be used if they are in a group like this. And we're going to have a look at the different properties available next. Let's go ahead and run the example I showed before with the different colored squares, but without the drag group first. If we click and drag each of these display balls, we can see that it works as expected. The drag display balls are stacked according to the order you put them in the script. That means whenever the first square in this example overlaps the second or third one, it will end up behind them. If you rather want the currently dragged drag display ball to end up above any of the others, you can do that too by using a specific drag property called drag raise and set it to true. And this should be added to all drag display balls where we want this behavior. Now this property is actually one that requires all the drags to be in a drag group in order to work. So we'll go ahead and create a drag group and add other drags inside it. Now when we test this, we can see that each drag ends up on top of the other as they're being dragged around. A drag also have a lot of other properties that you can use as well. In the documentation page about drag and drop on Rampai's website, which I have also linked to in the description box below, we can see a list of all the different properties available. The only one not relevant to use when we're working with Rempy's scripting language, rather than Python, is this D property. This one is used when you're working with Python to create drag objects to specify the display ball that should be used as a child of this drag. In Rempy's scripting language, we instead add the child as another display ball within the drag block, as I showed before. 
Whenever you want to know about the different properties available, you can always refer to this page to read about and how to use them according to your needs. Let's go over more of these properties next and how they work. With the drag of screen property, you can choose if you want the drag to be able to move outside the window's boundaries or not. If you set this property to false, the dragged item will not be able to leave the edges of the window or the screen and the opposite with the value true. Except for true and false values, you can also use this property to set how much of the displayable must stay within the boundaries. This is done by adding a tuple with two whole numbers representing how many pixels on the width and height that must remain inside. If we set this to a value of 100 on the width and height, then 100 pixels of the displayable on the width and height must stay within the boundaries. As you can see when we run the game, this is how far the square can move outside the boundaries before being blocked. With this property, you can also limit a drag's movement outside the boundaries to either the horizontal or vertical axis. So if you only want to allow horizontal movement outside the boundaries, you would write horizontal, and if you only want vertical movement, you would write vertical. Here's an example of how that looks. You can also use this property to create a sort of invisible border around the inside of the window. Here the first and second values are min and max values for the x-axis, and the third and fourth values are for the y-axis. So if you want for example a 50 pixel padding around the window for the drag to stop at, you would write 50 for the max x value, minus 50 on the min x value, and the same for the y values. And when we test this in the game, it will look like this. There's also one more type of value for this property called callable in the documentation page. This means you can create a custom Python function that will run when you're moving the drag around on a screen that will control its movements. An example is given in the documentation page where it shows you how it can be used to snap a drag to increments of 300 pixels on the y-axis. The x and y parameters of this function keeps track of the x and y position of the drag as it's being dragged. That's why this example code checks with if statements where the drag is located at the current time. Then depending on the result, a new y value is set and then returned with the return statement together with an x value. When testing this example in the game, we can see that the pink square will stay on the same x coordinate of 200 pixels, but will move up and down on the y axis as it is determined based on the conditions in this function. The draggable and droppable properties control whether a drag should be able to be dragged and if it allows other drags to drop onto it. So if you set the draggable property to false on a drag, it won't be able to be dragged and if you set the droppable property to false, another drag dropping onto it won't count. You don't have to set the draggable property to true in order for a drag to be draggable as this is the default behavior. The droppable property doesn't really affect a drag when used by itself but it's more useful when working with other properties and we'll have a look at that soon. In order to distinguish between different drags when you're working with drag groups, you can use a property called drag name. This is especially useful for when you're working with Python code, like custom callback functions, so you can compare the different drags by the names. For this example, I have named all the squares according to the colors. Using this property to name drags doesn't really do much by itself. As I mentioned before, it's more useful when you're working with Python code and want to compare drags by the names. And we'll go over that more later when we have a look at the properties that requires functions. In some circumstances, you might want to make the actual draggable area of a drag a different size rather than the size of the image it contains. For that, you can use the drag handle property and set the value to a tuple containing four different numbers. The first two numbers should be the x and y position of the draggable area, and the second two are the width and height. For this example, I set the coordinates to 0, 0 and the size to 100, 100. That means the draggable area will start at the top left corner of the drag and extend 100 pixels to the right and bottom. So now if we run this example and we click on the pink drag to drag it around, we can see that it works if we click over here, but if we click here and drag it, it doesn't work. That's because the size of the drag is 250 pixels, but we're only allowing 100 pixels from the top left corner to the bottom and right to detect dragging. You can also enter float values, which would be relative values rather than exact pixel coordinates. 
So if I say that the X and Y position should be 0.5, then the draggable area of the drag will start in the middle and extend out to the right and bottom 100 pixels.